Hey ladies, it's your girl Corporate Carolyn and as I wrap up my work day, it's almost over, yay, I had a question for you and it's mainly for younger women but some of you older ladies can also answer as well. Um, in your search for your Mr. Right or your husband, hopefully, um, I'm wondering, are you guys looking for a guy to build something with um, where he brings something to the table? He has to have something like the song that said you have to have a J-O-B if you want to be with me. I don't think that's an unrealistic expectation, but I think that some ladies go past a job and they want a guy to already be a finished product and that he's standing there at the um, finish line with all of his student loan debt paid off with a, a beautiful home, a beautiful car, you know, um, thousands and thousands, if not millions in the bank um, where, you know, you guys are able to go on wonderful trips and, you know, buy beautiful jewelry and just live happily ever after. Like, you know, some prince just comes and takes you away and you no longer have any more cares in the world. Is that the fantasy or the picture that you have in your mind? Or is it a very nice quality man with integrity, with the characteristics that you've written down um, in your letter to God, or just writing your list, whatever your um, you know faith background might be. But um, but it depending on what you're seeing in your mind's eye, it may explain why you might not have found anybody yet. Um, because I think that's totally unrealistic if you're like 25, 30, even 35, thinking that a man has to make six figures, already has to have a house, already has to have a wonderful car, you know, can't be taking um, public transportation or anything, can't be on the passenger side of his best friend's ride, um, you know, like TLC said in terms of being a scrub. I don't know if that necessarily makes a guy a scrub. And I think possibly um, a lot of ladies under 40 could be giving guys a bad rap and being um, very um, unrealistic with their expectations, especially if you are not bringing a whole lot to the table. Because there are a lot of women who might not be making very much money, um, might not be at their ideal weight, might not, um, you know, be looking the very best that they can look, and um, you know, might not have finished their degrees, or, or you know, just might be living at their mom's house and sleeping on a couch or something. And so what you run into when you're looking for these finished product men, let's call them that, finished product men or men that are at the finish line in your mind where everything is perfect. He checks all of the superficial boxes um, in your mind. Like, you know, he needs to drive a certain type of car. He needs to, you know, live in a certain neighborhood. He needs to have X dollars in the bank. He needs to, you know, have the right point in his career, be at the right point in his career. He needs to be in this fraternity. All of these things if you're like so focused on those things what you're going to run into when you get down there to the finish line these guys have often unrealistic expectations of what they are hoping to get as well and Kevin Samuels honestly touched on something like this mm. and some of the videos he used to do um, which I found so funny but a lot of them were really wrong and really bad because um, they would have he would have ladies rate themselves and then as soon as you would give a high rating like you'd say you were eight or nine or whatever he would say um, how tall are you what's your dress size and then after the lady might, you know, say like a 14 or, or she might say a 12, um, then he would say, well, what's, um, what was your weight the last time you weighed yourself? And if she said 200 pounds and like she was five, six, then he would go into the whole song and dance about, um, you realize you're heavier than the average man your size. And then, or like if a lady said she's 5'10 and she's 200 pounds, and then immediately he'd like punch in the throat and say, um, most men don't want a woman who weighs the same as they do. And the woman, you know, starts backpedaling and says, well, I'm a stallion or I'm this or I'm that. And she might be doing stuff to justify. And like having been a woman who has embellished her weight in the past, um, if you say that you weigh 185, he was right in assuming that a lot of 
tons, you could be closer to 200 pounds, but it's not that that's bad and that, you know, anyone should be bashing you for your weight. Believe me, as a young person, I struggle with my weight as well, which is why I exercise two hours a day, five days a week, and then like 45 to 50 minutes on the weekend because been there, done that, don't want to do it again. And also, I'm 58. I can't play around. I don't want, you know, to have problems with cholesterol, with blood pressure, anything like that. But what I'm saying is the more you like put all of these really high ideals of what a man needs to have about his money, his car, his house, his career, um, his social standings, um, his ability to do all sorts of wonderful things, and, and even um, to have you stay at home, even though you haven't earned the right to do that yet. Like staying at home is a privilege that couples work to together. Um, where you say, oh, okay, well, you know, yeah, we both built something and and um, I'm going to stay home with the kids for a few years. That's something you kind of grow into. Most men that are standing down, the, standing down there at that finish line aren't wanting to take care of you unless, unless you look like some video vixen or, I mean, and you're in proper proportion where, you know, bang, pow, zoom, and, you know, you have what um, society views as being, you know, that idea of beauty. And like a lot of rappers, you hear them talking about in their songs, you know, like a yellow bone or a red bone. Um, they're automatically like picking out women that are a certain skin tone or, you know, white. And I think some of the rappers I've heard, you know, mention that, you know, they might have a white girl or they might have an Asian girl or they might have an assortment of them. These guys think that they can just have the best of the best of what their ideals of beauty are. And so they are looking for women. Um, I'm too chubby. A lot of times they're looking for women that are twos and fours and um, that are skinny and that, you know, have like long, um, beautiful flowing hair. Um, and they're not doing protective styling <laughs> to get it. Um, so these guys are being very, very hard when they already, they have their choice of women at that point. They don't have to choose, you know, someone who's um, battling to get the last bit hmm, of their pudge off or a woman who's still working on her degree or a woman, you know, who might not meet society's standard of beauty. A lot of them can pick and choose what they want and instead of looking for love, um, you all of a sudden see that they're looking sometimes for status symbols, not saying that they can't meet a beautiful, like, you know, um, cover of a magazine type woman um, through love or normal channels, not saying that that's the case, but look at Eddie Murphy, like, um, um, I used to watch him in Trading Places, Beverly Hills Cop um, on Saturday Night Live, and then looking at him now, he was just an ordinary brother or a young man and then all of a sudden you see him with the wife that he married i mean his ex-wife who had the five kids for him i forget what her name was but she was gorgeous she was one of the most beautiful women that i have ever seen and even after five kids she has one of the best bodies that i have ever ever seen i mean just absolutely gorgeous would she have been with Eddie Murphy if he didn't already have his millions? Um, by that point, by the time he had his millions, that's who he wants on his arm. Not, you know, the little um, cute average looking girl that he might have met in college when he was first starting out. Um, by that point, they want status symbols. Look at um, Kevin Hart, um, what his wife looks like now. Um, it looks different than what the wife that he started with looks like. So if you're being really hard on men in this respect, you're going to be judged just as harshly. And the Bible even talks about, you know, um, judge not lest you be judged. And it said by the same measure that you judge, you'll be judged by. And so that's what's happening. You're setting up all of these high standards and high ideals. And then when you get that guy, 
He's looking for something completely different. He's looking past you and he's looking um, for a woman that can be on his arm and you know all of the other guys are envious and jealous because he feels he's earned the right. He's paid the cost to be the boss. So what do I advise you to do instead? Forget that whole high value man thing. And, and ladies that are in your 40s and older, I get it. You'll want a guy who's already bought a house. Um, for a man who's like at 40 and hasn't bought a house or doesn't have enough money to buy a house, doesn't have his own place, I do understand that you have the right to judge more harshly when they're 40. But I'm talking mainly to younger women right now who are being really hard on men that are in their building phase. In your 20s and 30s, you're building you know um, your your credit credentials up you know you're trying to get where you want to be you're trying to take steps make moves with your career um, you know it's not the time to say oh well you know he's not gonna be anything because you know he's 30 and he doesn't have a house or he's not gonna be anything because he only and I do only in air quotes, not to dismiss these salaries, but some women are just very dismissive of men who are making, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year. You know, they're saying, "Oh, we'll see." You know, he's not, um, you know, six feet tall. A lot of good guys are not six feet tall. You know, a lot of good guys are not making six figures. A lot of good guys, um, especially in their twenties, might live at home for a while um, to get their savings up. You know, so that they can buy a house and not be in an apartment like Martin was when you used to watch his show back in the day, a lot of them are focused and they're driven to reach a particular goal, but we're judging them very harshly because of the car. They might be driving a hoopty during that saving process. My husband, um, like I said, when I met him, um, I was riding around like this in his beat up Toyota Celica with the mint smatched um, hubcaps because he didn't want to buy a car because he wanted to keep his credit clean so that when we went to qualify for a house, neither one of us had car loans on there so we could afford a bigger and a better house. He was right and he lived at home with his mom until we got married and you know bought our house and moved into it and um, and so if I would have just said you know look at that car you know look at uh, he's living at home with his mom you know look at um, the job that he has as that at that point um, he wasn't where he was going to be and so what I would encourage you to do Find someone to build with. Um, make sure they bring something to the table. Have a job. Get an idea of what their goals and aspirations are. Don't rule them out because they have not made it yet. You're not where you're going to be. Um, like I was showing a picture when I was talking about the receipts of what um, my hair looked like before I turned 58 um, for someone who asked, you know, where was the picture of my hair, what it looked like when it was 18. Um, I was showing a picture like if my husband judged how my hair was going to look based on what he saw and he met me, you know, um, he would have been wrong because my hair and my body are a lot better than what they were when he first met me. He realized that I was a work in progress and we grew and we built a life together. That's what ladies should be focusing on, especially if you're in your 20s and your 30s. Stop judging these men so harshly. What you're getting in return is they're judging you harshly. So by that same measure that you're judging, you're going to be judged and then all of a sudden, you know, they're not going to want you. They're going to want these um, ladies you know, video vixens and whatnot. And if you're not that, you're not going to get them. So you better like try to find a guy that you can work and build something with. And I think you'll be better off in the long run. Sorry to be so long winded about that, but the guys are pushing back. They're getting really, really angry with us. And the same way we're saying that they're not anything, they're starting to say that we're not either. So we need to have some sort of dialogue where we meet in the middle. And I hope this is a great start for that. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.